labor are trying so very hard to deliver a viable alternative to the Tories in Westminster. To be fair, that is truly not a difficult thing to do right now. All they have to do is promise reform and to do things differently from the Tories. And they are pretty much on to a winner. Or just talk about it to get the votes to, to win a general election because anything is better than the Tories right now. Labour are billing themselves as the government in waiting. But let's discuss this government in waiting and see what it has to offer Scotland. First of all, in Scotland, at local political council level, they work hand in hand with the party of austerity, the party that votes against feeding hungry children, the Conservatives. In six councils throughout Scotland, Labour formed minority councils with the help of the Tories, and this was after Anna Sarwar publicly stated on more than one occasion that this would not happen. But then it did. They like to ignore Scottish democracy and also have openly discussed the denial of Scotland having a transfer of power in the form of a Section 30 to enable a second independence referendum. The most recent Gordon Brown report titled A New Britain, Renewing Our Democracy and Rebuilding Our Economy asked for massive constitutional change without even considering engagement with the devolved nations. In fact, Gordon Brown has been quoted saying a Labour government should move forward with these changes even if they were shut out politically in Scotland. Now we come to the big man himself and his most recent speech. Keir Starmer is probably one of the most boring orators I have ever listened to. Anyway, I have the most pertinent part of his most recent New Year's speech that is quite enlightening for Scotland. Let's take a listen and then we'll discuss the most important parts. The argument is devastatingly simple. The decisions which create wealth in our communities should be taken by local people with skin in the game. And a huge power shift out of Westminster can transform our economy, our politics, and our democracy. I'll go back to Brexit. Yes, a whole host of issues were on that ballot paper. But as I went round the country campaigning for Remain, I couldn't disagree with the basic case so many Leave voters made to me people who wanted public services they could rely on, high streets they could be proud of, opportunities for the next generation, and all of this in their town or their city. It was the same in the Scottish referendum in 2014. Many of those who voted yes did so for similar reasons. And it's not an unreasonable demand. It's not unreasonable for us to recognise the desire of communities to stand on their own feet. It's what take back control meant. The control people want is control over their lives and their communities. So we will embrace the take back control message, but we'll turn it from a slogan into a solution, from a catchphrase into change. We will spread control out of Westminster, devolve new powers over employment support, transport, energy, climate change, housing, culture, childcare provision and how councils run their finances. And we'll give communities a new right to request powers which go beyond even that. All this will be in a new take back control bill, a centrepiece of our first King's speech. That bill will deliver on the demands for a new Britain, a new approach to politics and democracy, a new approach to growth and our economy. Here Starmer talks about people making decisions with skin in the game. What, like Scottish people care, who have consistently voted into power pro-independence governments here in Scotland, we have skin in the game, wanting to express our need for a change in how we are governed. Does that little skin in the game bit apply to us, or are you just going to ignore that? 
He also mentioned that people wanted more control over their own lives and communities. Well, you're denying the whole of Scotland control over their own destiny by deliberately denying us the democratic transfer of power to hold a second independence referendum. You've said in the past that now is not the time and that you would never allow us the opportunity to have a Section 30. May I ask you then, is denying us this giving us back control? Oh yes, I would also say that the Scottish independence movement is not just about having more devolved powers in our communities. We want all the power of a normal, independent nation. That's what taking back control means to Scotland. You want to embrace this taking back control as more of a catchphrase? Well, you can't, as long as you deny Scotland the opportunity to choose. And you want to devolve new powers across the regions of the UK in things like health, education, transport and energy. Well, Scotland has the first three under our control. Does this mean that you will devolve energy to the Scottish Government? Yeah, I doubt that very much. Anyway, what happened to your national British energy company that you went so public about last year? Was that also just a wee buzzword to make you look cool? Devolving more powers to Scotland means nothing more than giving us more cord or an extendable leash cure. Westminster will always be able to reel that leash back in any time it so desires. So, why would we want that when the prize of independence offers us so much more? Finally, how will you address the elephant in the room that you know and clearly understand has destroyed the reputation of these islands and has destroyed the economy? Scotland did not vote for the disastrous Brexit of the Tories and now you say that you want to make Brexit work. How? It's just not possible. Our economy demonstrates clearly the lack of freedom of movement has caused a massive hole of skilled NHS workers and also casual labour for the hospitality industry, but you still want to hold fast on the principles of Brexit. You are a lunatic, and not any better than Boris, Liz or Rishi. Scotland deserves better than anything that you can offer, especially when all you can offer are repackaged promises that always turn out to be lies. You and your Westminster Anglo-British nationalists are party to the rise of the Scottish independence movement and more people flocking to yes. The longer you keep denying democracy, the more crosses will land in that yes box. So good luck running the rest of the UK here, especially without Scotland.